what about the track Naima? Naima, yeah. I mean, that cover, I mean, one of my favorite songs, favorite standards, uh, written by Coltrane for his wife. That was a funny uh, experience to record, actually, because, I mean, I had this idea of lying around for a long time, of having, sort of playing a ballad with a melody playing, played almost kind of rubato over this really fast 5-8 rhythm. And so it's almost like two songs being played at the same time, but it's like not quite. And uh, so we got in the studio first day, second day. I, I was thinking, okay, I just want to get my originals out of the way first, and then everyone knows the song already. It's a standard. We'll just cut it real quick at the end. And then at the end of the second day, everyone was so goddamn tired. Especially Suresh, he had been drumming like eight hours a day for two days, more than two days, because we re we'd rehearsed till three days. And um, we start doing this like fast 5 8 rhythm, and it's just not working. It's, yeah, it's just going nowhere. We have like, we're on the clock as well, so it's two hours left to go, less than two hours to go, we have like an hour to go. And I was like, okay, we have to do something with this. So he was playing this uh, kind of more African sounding thing. Like it sounds on a record, like taki 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 that sort of thing. So me and Martin just started playing the melody over that and then what, ran through it once and we just started rolling. And uh, Halfway through the take, Martin was like, yeah, man, this needs to be, we need to do something with the, with the middle of it because it just it doesn't have quite the energy that it should have. So me, him, and Amon came up with this sort of interlude kind of thing where it's just like, it's, we all break down and it's just in the beginning of his solo and Amon playing the chords and it ended up being this absolutely beautiful sort of, it's almost classical the way it, everything kind of fades out and builds up back again and uh, I mean Martin just ripped off a beautiful solo with that just sort of like a springboard and then uh, one really funny the most funny part uh, for me was he went uh, slightly over in his solo means because I mean it's an AABA -A form like almost all standards um, and he played the first A, uh, but I had gotten somewhat thrown off because, yeah, I mean, it was the first take that we'd actually been properly recording, and I wasn't used to being like playing it in this in this way. And uh, I played my solo starting from where I thought was the first A, so we got to the B, and I was still playing the A section. And somehow that managed to sound really, really fucking cool on the record. I, I mean, you can kind of hear where it's like, uh, there's a moment on a Weather Report album, I think it's on the song like uh, Cucumber Slumber, I think it is, when you can hear that Joe Zawinul has his, has his headphones on and then he didn't realize that the whole band had changed key and he's still in the same key. And he like took his headphone off, he's like, oh fuck. And he just changes key real quick and it sounds brilliant. Like it just sounds totally intentional. So, yeah, there was a series of happy accidents that tune was. Follow the links in the description and download your copy of Chimu Fiesta today.